When it comes to world hunger, a little hanger is totally justified. Hanger, noun. A surge of irrational anger triggered by feelings of hunger. Hanger is totally a thing. You don't want to be anywhere near me if it's 3 p.m. and I haven't had lunch yet. But if one missed meal is enough to make me see red, shouldn't we all be flat out indignant about how 795 million people all over the world can't get enough to eat on a daily basis? Luckily, world leaders share our righteous hanger, if you will. Earlier this summer, the heads of some of the world's most powerful countries got together at the G7 summit and decided to do something about it. Their goal? To lift 500 million people out of hunger by 2030. Which sounds great in theory, but is it realistic? Can we actually solve a problem as big as world hunger? Today, I want to take the edge off your righteous hanger a little bit. Here are three big reasons why the world can end extreme hunger. Reason one, we've already done it, sort of. Since 1990, the number of hungry people in the world has dropped by a whopping 216 million people. That's like putting food on the table for every single person in Brazil. Brazil! Do you know what's even more impressive? During that same period, the world population grew by nearly 2 billion people. Bigger planet, less hunger? Progress has never tasted so good. Okay, reason number two why we can end hunger. We already produce enough food to feed everyone. Remember that one time we dressed up vegetables as office workers to talk about food waste? Long story short, it turns out that a mind-blowing amount of the world's food goes to waste. Case in point, by some estimates, consumers in industrialized countries waste almost as much food every year as all of sub-Saharan Africa produces. The question is, even if we didn't waste all that food, does the world produce enough to feed everyone? You bet your medium rare steak it does. In fact, we as a planet already have the capacity to feed 2 billion more people than are currently even alive. All of which is to say that ending world hunger is not about production. What it really comes down to is access. Making sure every man, woman, and child can get the food they need, whether it comes from a grocery store or their own backyard. To do that, we need smart policy and strategic investment from governments all over the world. Which brings me to my next point. Reason number three why we can end hunger. Small changes matter. Not all that long ago, Ethiopia was the poster child for world hunger, and not in a good way. In the mid 80s, literally hundreds of thousands of people died in a devastating famine, and hunger ran rampant pretty much year round. Things have gotten a lot better since then, thankfully. Undernourishment is down over 30%. A big reason why? The government of Ethiopia started investing in its small farmers. Irrigation, herbicide, better fertilizer. These weren't exactly earth-shattering improvements, but together, they helped cut hunger in a big way. The point is, beating hunger doesn't have to mean spending trillions of dollars on space-age tech or airdropping emergency food all over the place. If Ethiopia is any indication, small changes can fill a lot of bellies. To recap, we can end world hunger because we've already come a long way, we produce enough to feed everyone, and small changes make a big difference. Are you hangry about world hunger? Want to make sure those G7 leaders make good on their promise to feed 500 million people by 2030? Then visit globalcitizen.org and make your voice heard. Global citizens have already taken half a million actions in support of this key issue and all the others in focus at this year's Global Citizen Festival. Thanks for watching. And as always, check us out on YouTube for the latest Global Citizen videos.